Thank you for inviting us to come and speak and share uh, the maturity model for Microsoft 365. So we're going to introduce you to the maturity model for Microsoft 365, and I want to explain why it's been created. <laughs> so the maturity model provides the why for Microsoft 365. You know, we all love building cool features on the 365 platform, whether it's that list formatting magic or Microsoft Teams apps or the uh, SharePoint framework web parts, you know, you guys have built uh, as part of the PMP. Um, and we can see the value these enhancements provide. How often it's quite difficult for us to get buy-in from key decision makers as they don't see the value of the features or they don't see the big picture. So what the maturity model does, and it's aimed at business owners, key decision makers, technical consultants, to enable them to see and understand the benefits and the impact that the 365 platform can have on their business. It's a framework that uh, provides a, uh, a holistic view of the organization and, and, and labels it to understand where it is on its Microsoft 365 journey. And the framework allows decision makers to understand the impacts and benefits that they can get and the organization can get if it focuses energy on improving Microsoft 365. So the framework provides uh, a way of understanding the options which might be available for solving different business problems. Um, it allows them to see where they currently are and, and identify where they want to be, their desired state. So then they can the organization can focus the energy resources on the right things for the business. And finally as well, it enables the business to have a baseline so it can measure how it's doing on its Microsoft 365 journey and see how things are improving over time. And finally, the, the maturity model is part of the 365 Community Docs efforts and it's part of the PMP Sharing is Caring initiative. So, you know, we can have community input and uh, your wisdom and expertise can uh, help make it better. So, where you know how you know what what is the maturity model based on? Well, it's based on the capability maturity model, which was built in uh, it's 1986 actually, uh, and it was designed uh, to improve software development processes model. The level one is sort of the the start of the process, and it uh, is level one initial, and this is where processes they're not documented, they're chaotic, they're poorly controlled, and and they uh, react to the environment that they're within, um, and, and this is the initial initial stage. Uh, level two, uh, which is managed, and this is where we the processes are, are start to becoming documented. Um, but different projects might have different uh, different approaches, different processes, and they're still reacting to to the environment, so that they are still quite chaotic. And then as you move to uh, level three, the defined uh, level, this is where processes are documented and this really takes up a notch. Your process is documented uh, and they're enforced across the organization. And these processes have been sort of well thought out. And so they are proactive um, and, and, and are not reacting so much to uh, environment changes. So once you've got to level three, then the level four is quantitatively managed. And this is where we take those documented processes, um, which are being constantly applied across the business, and we add some measures to them so that we can see how effective they are. And it's interesting to see how, even though this was built in 1986, you know, this ability to measure is, is what we use in you know, agile software development today. So once you've got uh, uh, processes which are being measured, then we can sort of move to the holy grail of level five, where we can start optimizing processes. Um, and we can t make tweaks to the process and then uh, measure the effect that it has on, on the organization and on those processes. So we can select the tweaks which work best for us so we can improve those processes. This slide shows how we've applied the capability maturity model to the Microsoft maturity model or Microsoft 365 maturity model. I'm not going to go through this now because we're a bit short on time, but however, we'll be sharing the presentation and if you're interested, you can take a look. So I'd like to hand to Mr. Hudson, who's going to discuss the approach we've taken. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, and uh, I'm going to sort of think about the approach that we've taken with building a substantial set of documents already around uh, the capability and maturity model for Microsoft 365. Um, the first thing is if the purpose of developing a maturity model is to enable management buy-in, then we deliberately chose not to make this too technical. We're not going to let the 
competencies that we've developed documentation for be driven by the technology or the features. Yeah. And, and part of that is because the technology platform is just vast and changing so very quickly. Um, but business needs are relatively common and relatively slower. So we've concentrated on defining a set of business competencies that resonate with the Microsoft 365 capabilities but underpin business activity. Um, we want to be able to provide tools, not just information, and we want the organizations, as Simon said, to be able to use those tools to figure out where they are in any function or any department or any part of the business and what better looks like, how they get there. So not only should the maturity model uh, for Microsoft 365 not be about features, but it also shouldn't be about IT. We wanted to create a toolkit which anybody in the business, particularly managers and change agents within the organization, can pick up and run with. So that's the approach that we've taken. Just to touch on a moment of history, all of this really started with the SharePoint material that Sadie, who was on this call, and to whom we're all very grateful for kicking all this off. Um, uh, it all really started with the SharePoint maturity model, and that was really quite focused on the capabilities that SharePoint 10 years ago brought to the table. If we move on to the next slide there, you'll see how we've morphed that into being more business orientated. And look at that, a genuine morph, look at that. Um, so we've got a set of competencies which are very business orientated. We've tried to think about the things which underpin almost any kind of a business. We think we've been pretty encompassing in that, but if you think we've missed anything, please let us know, because uh, we can ask some more. Um, we're not quite finished in the job yet. So there's uh, about three that are currently under development. Those are the ones in the middle. But we haven't stopped there either. We think that this is a, a pretty large undertaking. And so we've started wrapping some additional documents, things like how, how do you have the print? What are the principles of co uh, communication, for example, around that? So there are additional documents looking at uh, supporting concepts tools for moving from level 300 to 400, for example, and uh, practical advice on implementation. So that's what we've been trying to do. Of course, that's lovely, but you still don't know what it is. So let's have a look at one. This is uh, on the left hand side, you see what the full collaboration competency would look like if you had it all out on a very long sheet of paper, like those old lino printers that I uh, grew up with. And then we've pulled out one particular section so you can see that we've tried to produce something that is rather more digestible. Um, a couple of important principles in there. Um, we've tried to make sure that there is consistency through all of the documents. So we've got the same sets of headings, um, the, the same language and style all the way through to make it very navigable. Someone should be able to jump in and go, I need to understand a bit more about how to manage content. They should be able to grab that, that content management or, um, competency and jump straight in. Let's just drill down into one of those. So if you do me the next slide. Terrific. So this is just a, 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 a fractional snapshot of one part of level 200 and you can see in here we've pulled out some sub uh, categories so this is collaboration and we've thought here about governance and security within collaboration and we've given you some examples of statements that apply for organizations or functions that are running at level 200 and then on the right hand side what those statements or related statements might be for an organization or a process running at 400. That's a, 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 a whet your appetite for what it is. I'm going to hand over to uh, Emily now, who talks about what happens next. So as the two Simons have pointed out, we can use the maturity model to align the company on what can and will be done across the platform. So improve organization through the use of technology. This technology is most successful when we're using it to solve existing challenges in the organization. Maybe you're struggling with raising transparency and decision making. This could be a great opportunity to look at your communication competency and see what kind of SharePoint communication sites and news you're using. It can be used to benchmark the company and departments. The maturity model provides a rubric to measure the current state, which will be critical in measuring growth and tracking ROI to share with stakeholders or decision makers. Collaboration and communication are softer topics, so this develops the language to begin measuring it all. Microsoft 365 is so much more than usage statistics because we are essentially shifting the way people are working, collaborating, and communicating to solve these real-world problems. You can select an appropriate approach. The model acknowledges that one size fits all. Your company size, culture, goals, and industry all have impacts on what is the right maturity level for your organization. 
For example, a six-person company may never need to be at the 500 level for communication. This model does not dictate any levels as better than others, but instead focuses on the impacts so you can choose what matters most to support your objectives. It helps you to develop an organizational business and technical roadmap based on what's possible, what's desired, the organization's cultures and drivers. Now that we know current state and identified future state, you can use those how-to articles that Simon referenced to navigate a plan to get there, which enables you to lead and support strategic planning with senior management. It can be used to align implementation needs and objectives. So maybe you're just be at the beginning of your journey. Your current state is level zero, so you can choose which level you want to begin with for your implementation. Some organizations might need to begin at 300 for Microsoft 365 to be impactful. Aligning on impact allows you to focus the traditional requirements conversation for Microsoft 365 on the outcome objectives, which is really about the change you are seeking and working better together. You can discuss the use of the platform with IT. It's not just about the technology. So we're expanding IT's understanding past the systems themselves to the outcome objectives it supports, which is a very user-centric focused approach. It can also be used as a socialization tool across your organization. Majority of your colleagues using Microsoft 365 aren't IT professionals and don't spend the amount of time we all do understanding the platform. So the maturity model is a Cliff's Notes version of what is possible. It's a useful artifact to share with your colleagues to increase their understanding of the platform. And even better, it is community maintained, reducing your individual burden at your organization to create this content. So as we've all alluded to, this belongs to the whole community and we would love to have you get involved. This is one of those items that is open source and not just for developers. These articles are a great opportunity for subject matter experts, business analysts, IT professionals, communications or marketing leads, truly anyone who's working with Microsoft 365. So help us grow this open source initiative by contributing in a variety of ways. You can socialize the model, ask questions, suggest changes, share experiences, look out for an upcoming Ask Me Anything with Mark, Hugo and David. And then you can actually contribute content as well. And we did call out some of those open competencies. If you want to contribute content, I highly recommend joining the Sharing is Caring training sessions by Hugo and David. There are two sessions, and one is specific to community docs. As a GitHub newbie, they armed me with everything I needed to feel comfortable to contributing. Efforts like this can start in really unexpected ways. Sadie Van Buren kicked it off in 2010 with the SharePoint maturity model. Mark and I joined Sadie's efforts in June this year to update it to reflect changes in Microsoft 365. Sometimes all it takes is a tweak to get some new team members. Mark sent a tweet mid-June, which Simon Doy and Simon Hudson saw, and this initiative aligned with something they were already thinking about, so it was an excellent opportunity to begin collaborations. Just like that open loop network at your organization, Twitter is an excellent way to find new collaborators with diverse perspectives. Throughout this initiative, we have learned from each other's perspectives, gained insights into some competencies we may be less familiar with, and stretched our thinking on areas we felt we were a subject matter expert. <clears throat> Having this shared goal offered us the opportunity to develop better collaboration techniques and a connect across the globe during a time of isolation. And this has been my favorite piece as the typical networking and knowledge sharing conversations at conferences has not really been possible this year. So hopefully these benefits spark your interest in contributing to the maturity model. Thank you all for your time and attention. We hope to see your contributions and have you join this discussion with us. Thank you. This is like an amazing uh, set of content, amazing feature, I think. Uh, as it, it really will help organizations assess where they are and, and plan to improve, to get more mature in the Microsoft 65 uh, usage. So really well done, great work. and. Hope you guys get uh, a ton of new contributions uh, and feedback uh, on this work. Well, 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 really well done.